Hello and welcome back to Shelf Center. This is Bryce and thank you so much for stopping by. This is my attempt at weekly updates regarding news uh, as it regards to science fiction and fantasy and sometimes horror. We're talking books, we're talking media, and then sometimes some channel updates. So that's what we got for you today here. Uh, first things first, the books. Let's look at the books first. And the biggest news really to address is Brandon Sanderson's secret projects. They're coming out, they're getting ready here. I just did uh, an update as to the status of the Kickstarter uh, rewards that are coming out here uh, soon, starting in January. I did double check with them. I, I just moved and I was worried they didn't have my address. Apparently, I gave them the right one already, and so we're good to go. But also, uh, because of that, because of the, the secret projects, the, the projects, that are, projects that are coming out uh, via the Kickstarter, uh, not to worry if you didn't, if you're one of the three people that apparently didn't uh, get on with the Kickstarter, there will, they will be available through Tor, and there's a whole schedule coming up for the rest of the year slash into 2024. So we're starting January uh, 2023 for the Kickstarter secret project number one, but April will be uh, secret project number one kind of released in your normal stores like your Barnes and Noble and whatnot. Then June of 2023 for book two, then we're looking at October 2023 for book three, and then finally January 2024 for book four. So it's all kind of like a couple months off of the Kickstarter one. I'm sure there was some arrangement there. Tor was like, yes, we like money, so we'll take the <laughs> anything else we can get, uh, clearly, um, and good on them. So that's good, uh, and honestly, let's be honest, a lot of people will probably have both at one point, right? Speaking of Brandon Sanderson, The Lost Metal uh, was released just barely, November 15th. Uh, that date will be important for late for just a second here. Uh, <laughs> And, um, but anyway, I, I've heard actually some mixed things. Gosh, I keep, uh, it's like on one end, you've got like Patrick is just like uh, groundbreaking and then you got Matt's fantasy books and going, well, what did you do, Sanderson? Uh, I have not read any Mistborn yet whatsoever, so I will most likely get there, but I have no rush to jump on the Lost Metal right this moment, that is for sure. All right, in self-published book news, we have... The Monsters We Feed got itself a nice cover. This is a standalone uh, book in the Illumina world from Thomas Howard Riley. Uh, it, his We Break Immortals has really kind of hit the world by storm, and so I'm, I'm excited for this one as well. But I just, I wanted to, I had to, to make some reference to this cover because I'm loving it, and I can't believe I didn't uh, talk about it earlier. All right, and as you may or may not know, Twitter pretty much just exploded. Imploded maybe is more accurate. I don't know which one it is, but there's just been so much craziness as you've already seen. You've seen it before. You've seen it here first uh, in with Elon Musk taking over. Uh, I think there's been some benefits arguably, but mostly just a lot of fear and craziness going on. Um, and I'm trying to be neutral here, but... Uh, mostly what I'm worried about and concerned about is the community that I've been involved with uh, through Twitter. It's been a great place, great place to just have friends and, and joke around about books and, and have fun together uh, and share great books and, and learn about how many self-published books that I've learned about, not to mention traditionally published books. So it's it's been a little nerve-wracking, but at the same time, kind of... I don't know, I, I feel like technologically, as I've learned in my in my old age here, is that I seem to make that voice all the time, apparently. We're from Y2K, uh, and since then, almost, it's just been like, if there's a big concern, it's it ends up not really amounting to much. So uh, let's, let's hope it stays civil, but it, it does seem like, I feel like Twitter is kind of an echo chamber that you want to make of your own self anyway. Uh, I know there's like some issues that you can have, um, it, you know, maybe hopefully there's can be some things like editing or maybe deleting people uh, who comment on your own posts. 
might be a good idea to kind of keep the hate down, you know. Uh, you know, they have these in other social medias. Just seems to be the right way to go. But I'm not the head. You know, he's going to put me at the head of, uh, of, of anything. No one wants to listen to my ideas. I'm not the one firing people now here. Another book news that I'm frustrated about, uh, the Goodreads Choice Awards. The Goodreads Choice Awards. Oh, can I count the ways that I hate you so much? Um, I've got a little chip on my shoulder. I've talked about this in a, in a previous video from last year. You can check it out. Uh, but my frustration is just that it logically does not make any sense and it ignores a full often sixth of the year. Now, speaking of The Lost Metal, which was released November 15th, 2022, uh, guess what was uh, in the Goodreads Choice Award first round that started well before November 15th, 2022? <gasps> the Lost Metal! Does it make any sense? No, no it doesn't. Uh, and this is where I just, I get so frustrated that the Goodreads choice is, I just don't know why, it, well, it, it's solely because we're trying to get sales for the Christmas time. Are we not? Is that not the whole reason for it? Let's just own up to that. But us December birthdays, we're frustrated with this, okay? At least uh, I have not talked to anyone else, it's only me. But it is so frustrating to me. Uh, there's just this complete, ig just, just completely ignoring December, uh, let alone November as well, uh, you know, arguably December though, one of the best months. I mean, it's got some great things, including a lot of time off for people from work. Um, if, if not to mention school. So, but it just, it frustrates me to no end and it logically doesn't make a whole lot of sense because these books that haven't even been released yet will end up on there uh, for apparently no reason, I don't know, but it really, if you're going to be awards for the year and you're going to call it the year, then it would make sense that they happen after that year happens and people have a chance, especially, I know people read faster than me and I know a lot of people read like The Lost Metal within a day and I don't do that. <laughs> it usually takes me at least a week or two. Um, and so, but it just frustrates me to no end that it'll just be like, who cares? It's the 2022 and sometimes it'll have random books that, I mean, who could have possibly even have nominated the book that wasn't released yet? <laughs> anyway, I will get off my stupid soapbox. I get it, but it frustrates me and I continue to boycott it to this day because I am in solidarity with December birthdays. All right, then in a book adjacent news, <laughs> we'll go with that. Uh, there is in the booktube oh, sphere. there's a new science fiction alliance. We've got some great channels that are involved with this. I will leave a link down below. Uh, it looks like uh, channels like Words in Time, Fit to be Read, uh, Media Death Cult, Who Am I Missing, Library Ladder. And I forget who it is, so I apologize, but you'll see it in the video if you want to check that out below. Um, all I know, and I want to say it here, is that the Fantasy Alliance could kick the Science Fiction Alliance's butt any day, okay? You heard it here first. All right, and then as an update, I am participating in the Once Upon a Readathon readathon, and it's been a lot of fun, and I've had a really insanely successful month. We are not even through with the month. We still have at least a week left in the month, and somehow I have already read nine books going on 10, which is like some kind of a record for me. I'm usually at about a four to five a month and, and then some months this year I've already have even been down to three. So like I said, I'm about a week to finish a book here. <laughs> um, I got a lot going on, okay? And I'm a slow reader. So about to finish number 10, a lot of these have been shorter books. A couple have even been manga, but I'm counting them because they count for the readathon and I'm getting all the points and I'm getting all the challenges. So you better watch out but the, cause, because the huntsmen are coming for you, okay? Anyway, so you still, there's chance, there's still time, still time to join up. We still got plenty of time and I'm sure you guys read way faster than I do anyway. 
So I was pretty proud of that, pretty excited. It's been really a fun time and just a fun time getting to know some other booktubers that I hadn't known as well. And I, and honestly, to be to participate in things, I did a, a reading sprint uh, and just to participate in things and learn about other books that aren't just in my normal wheelhouse, but that people are giving legit five-star reviews to that I'm going, okay, I'm, I'm taking note. I, got, I, li I like a five-star book. That's the important part, right? All right, a couple of media news, both involving Disney for some reason. Uh, one, the one that I'm excited about is uh, Grogu and S Studio Ghibli. Uh, I love Studio Ghibli. They've got great anime just classics, epics. Um, I mean, obviously the big one is Howl's Moving Castle. And if you haven't read that book, you got to read that book. It's great. Spirited Away, all the just wonderful classics while they're doing some Grogu action. Grogu and the Dust Bunnies. So I'm, I, I just think it's so cool. I need to watch it. It is apparently already on Disney Plus. That was just a quick boom, boom, boom. Anyway, very much looking forward to watching that with my kids. And it's a perfect week to do that because they are off on Thanksgiving break while I am a sucker and have to go to work. Lame. Disney has also, so that's why I said they're still in the, they're in the news for other reasons. Uh, it's, you know, been a crazy couple years for them, right? Apparently, Bob Iger, the former CEO, uh, is back in the CEO chair, taking over for Chapek, uh, you know, Iger involved in a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff like acquiring um, Lucasfilm, starting Disney Plus. Uh, I want to say he's the one. He is he the reason why we have all those stupid straight to video sequels, though. Apparently, that made them a ton of money. But uh, come on, that's really <laughs> talk about watering down the brand. But anyway um he's back i don't know if that tells you good things or bad things um i don't know i know that that he's coming back and they want to make money so hopefully they've learned from some fan complaints that you may be able to make money in like the short term by doing some certain things like uh certain uh new ish star wars trilogy but you know you really like you know if you stay true to the fans and don't alienate them completely uh, even though there will be some duds in there, uh, maybe you'll get them long term supporting you. Maybe it's not even a, not even possible. Who knows? Uh, but that would be my hope. <laughs> Let's hope that that's happening. And then also, if I found them, I'm gonna include some Kindle deals down in the description. I always love a good Kindle deal. That's why my Kindle is filled with books I'll probably never read. But hey, I love supporting authors and getting their numbers high when they get a good sale going. And then it helps them in the future because they've climbed that high. Uh, so I hope uh, I found some good ones here. I'm sure I did. There's, there's always something. Uh, and anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for checking out my little old channel and we will catch you later. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.